morning to the National Council of Wool Selling Brokers of Australia, Ms Annabelle Cleland, Mr Ian Ashman and Mr Ed Storey, as well as my fellow brokers. My name is Cassie Bale and I'd like to thank you very much for the opportunity to present today. I'm originally from Bendemeer, uh, a small town just out of Tamworth and grew up on a family farm in Bear. That's where we ran Merinos and that is where my passion for the industry, sheep and wool began. After completing year 12, I then went on to complete my certificate four in wool classing through TAFE and Rouse about it for a year. I then studied at University of New England in an agribusiness degree and that is when I started to look forward to the opportunities that could be available. I commenced a wool traineeship program in 2012 and then continued on to be a wool technical officer for three years. Three years ago now, I started with AWN in Goulburn, where I look after clients within a two hour radius and also manage our Sydney show floor. In my presentation today, I will be discussing the following. My broker services and the marketing techniques I use, the responsibilities of the technical services role, including wool typing, sales catalogue and auctioneering and as well, how I engage and promote the wool industry and my involvement within the community. <coughs> the foundation to a quality broking service, I believe, is the need to identify and implement the appropriate marketing options specific to a client's enterprise, and also to, to provide the essential information and feedback to them throughout the selling process. When I acquired Dennis Workman as a client in 2015, he was unsure what marketing options were available to him. His clip is a traditional superfine clip, averaging between 15 to 17 microns, and his sheep are mules, but, using, but with having used pain relief. I researched the options that could be available to Dennis, and recommended to him the New England Wool Sustainable Integrity Scheme. Sustainable Blue applies to all types of wool and rewards growers who still need to mules but do use the registered pain relief product. Uh, accredited clips are printed in the buyer's catalogue each sale day and this creates healthy competition amongst all buyers. Uh, the we, I used the Sustainable Blue to implement as a management tool in order to safeguard the quality of the clip and to increase the chance for increased uh, competition and to create a premium for my client as well as to be able to promote his brand to the industry. In order to be accredited for the Sustainable, growers go through an accreditation process. This, this requires them to read the sustainable manual, the grower checklist and the order checklist. Once my client and I had agreed we, on this sustainable scheme, I visited him on farm, took the paperwork and reviewed the requirements that he would be required to apply to his farming practices. Reading through, the, through these three important documents, I ensured that, the, that my client understood all that was in was entailed of him in order to be, to be successful in being, being accredited. In 2016, his clip was accredited with the Sustainable Blue. I also continue to provide market reports and intelligence to Dennis in order to sell his clip at the best possible time in order to also meet the timing of his yearly shearing. Over the past three years, we've been gaining the price targets required by the client which has given him the confidence to continue producing his wool clip and to remain in the industry and be strong. This graph displays the client's sale results for the past three years as compared against AWEX's published premium and discounts report. We use the AWEX PND report as it is a recognised price basis. These results show that Dennis has achieved an average premium of 187 cents per kilo across the three years. This demonstrates to the client the consistency of better prices against the weekly market. In 
In addition to my direct client broking work and within my role as the Northern New Technical Manager, I aim to always maintain, maintain the highest quality of service to AWN's broker network, our clients, and to protect the industry and the integrity of it. I manage our show floor and our sales on a weekly basis on behalf of our Northern team. I prepare the auction catalogues for each of the sales, which also requires good time management and good communication with all staff. I provide important feedback to our Northern team when typing, and as I am typing, this also allows me to make important decisions in order to best market our clients' wool. It, for example, if we have a line of wool that's not as appropriate for room one, I can have it moved. So it's a, a change that then increases the competition of it in room two. Um, I also provide important feedback to our Northern team and my fellow reps when typing. And for the past year, four years, I've been auctioneering and enjoy the challenge and energy that comes with the fast pace of the selling. I believe that since becoming an auctioneer has made me a more confident person and I've also built a very good rapport with the buyers. This relationship with the buyers enables me to then provide more feedback to my own clients. I'm able to ask the buyers where the, the, where, sorry, where the wool is going and what product it is destined for. And the clients really appreciate this feedback because they take between six to 12 months to produce it. So to be able to follow it further down the pipeline is very important to them. In addition, I follow past in lots from the weekly sales in order to negotiate a positive outcome for our clients. I'll, sorry. Um, just one other example of how I value add to my clients and assist them with the selling process is that I take, if they're not able to make it to the weekly sales, I'll just take a picture and send it to them. So that's more building you know, that rapport between them so that they're able to see that the wool has presented, presented well, and it's more, not an initial feedback, but it's, it is feedback. Being an AWEX accredited wool appraiser, this enables me to type our weekly sale catalogues. I receive the monthly AWEX appraiser benchmark reports, and this is how I'm able to contract my consistency of each month. I use an iPad, which has the applications to directly enter the wool type information into the AWH system. And I believe that this is a very positive way forward of using technology within the industry. Um, I, I've introduced the use of the iPad to AWN as I believe it's much more, it's a much easier and more efficient process. It's creating a paperless show floor and it also means that there is no double handling required of office staff. Uh, in turn, it also uh, can, is dramatically reducing the amount of errors that can be made as well. In order to gain the adoption of the technology, I created a training program for my fellow reps uh, to be able to teach them and show them how to do the typing. This really helps uh, in the case of big sales and also files away on annual leave. It has always been extremely important to me that each of my clients know that they are respected, appreciated, and that the company and myself are grateful for their business. For example, those who sell five bales per year shouldn't view themselves any differently to those who sell 500 bales per year. I believe that I've built a very good rapport between myself and my clients, as I care for them not only from a business perspective, but on a personal level as well. I believe this level of care Communication and commitment are integral to maintaining a large variation of personalities and expectations which I manage on the company's behalf. My dedication to the industry and to my role are extremely important to me as, because as a wool broker, it's not necessarily a nine to five, nine to five job and we're not only just working Monday to Friday. I also assist clients with marketing sheet privately 
direct to the abattoir and also by using the Auctions Plus selling as a platform. I also assist with sheep classing and more recently with DNA testing on farm. I thoroughly enjoy the daily client interaction and believe that my appreciation for the product, product and my positivity passes on to my client but also on to shed staff. My community involvement includes the art, being a part of the Art for Agriculture program as a young farming wool champion, assisting with work experience students and AWI visiting groups, and also being a part of the Wool Ball Committee, which has revived the ball last year and this year. I'd like to thank you all very much for this morning and leave you with this picture from this year's Sydney Royal Easter Show, of which I was very proud to be a part of to promote the wool industry. Thank you. Cassie, thank you for your presentation. It was very comprehensive and well done. Thank you. Just a, a, a general question about an important one, I think. You've mentioned a few of the things that specialise in, but what do you think is the most important role for a wool broker? What do you see as the most important aspect of your wool broker? Um, as part of the wool broking role, um, I do believe that taking care of the clients sh should be a priority. You're acting in their best interests to, in order to meet the market, gain good prices for them. They rely on us to be able to, you know, um, to negotiate the market to see when would be the best opportunity to be selling and um, to also to be a part of that to make it happen. Um, so, yeah, sorry, Anne. So yeah. just, yeah, client servicing, looking after them, knowing the market, knowing what it's doing and the fluctuations, what could influence it, and uh, the follow through, I think, too, because you, you sort of, you, you are assisting the client from day one, you know, whether it's breeding or with the first day of shearing, all the way through to selling it and it's very important for them to be able to understand the, the processes as well. Well done Cassie. Um, are you comfortable selling through more than just the physical option, uh, option sorry, and how do you mitigate um, price risk, risk of both market fluctuations, discounts and even premium opportunities? Yeah, thank you. Anna. Yeah. Um, so yes, I'm happy. I'm happy, and I do so also assist with uh, other selling techniques, uh, mainly through the auction system, through the open cry of a weekly sale. Uh, we also can do and do do direct direct orders, of which it does does involve having a direct contact with overseas buyers being able to meet the market, gain the good price for the grower, um, and also be able to foresee orders that could be suitable. Um, likes of our forward trading, uh, that's probably a very good example of being able to manage the market risk, lock in on an indicator, and be able to manage that risk as to whether the client can deliver <coughs> the quantity of wool by you know, six months time or 12 months time or further down the track. Uh, that's probably one of our best uh, management uh, systems of being able to reduce the amount of risk. <coughs> Sorry, can I yeah. ask one after? Yeah, sure. Um, you, me you mentioned earlier about the advice that you gave to your client, Dennis, and yeah. you said that you shifted when he sold his wool, is that right? That he was. When he sold his wool, could yes. you shifted the time of year he sold it? Yes. How, how did you determine that, and did it impact his kind of shearing program as well? Yes. We did decide, so the first year he sure as normal, but the second year he did shear slightly earlier, uh, by two months. That did also, that had an on-flow effect because at the time the market was extremely strong in the high tensile strength wools. Uh, so in that time, it, the, the sheep were still growing a re recommended amount of wool in that time. So instead of shearing 12 months, we're shearing 10 still ideally getting about 90 mils and getting a better test result with it being a shorter staple. Um, so he saw that on flow effect from the prices as well. Uh, the test results printed in the catalogues were shown, uh, the buyers see those 
And so they're seeing the samples, seeing the test results. And I believe we, we would have probably increased what the stable strength would have been in comparison to Wendy Shaw to 12 months, just to take those couple of extra months out of the tougher times of the season around where he is at Terralga. Well done. Your turn. Yeah. Thanks, Cassie. Great presentation. Um, given all the things you do, I'm wondering what Mark Headley does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> I'll Breaking is, we, oh, excuse me, we live in a world with, with lots of technological changes and, you know, change is a, is a rapid constant at the moment. What do you see as the major opportunities and challenges for, for, the, for wool breaking companies, given that interface between a, 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 a commodity that takes 12 months to produce, or, or you know, a number of months, and the, the technological side? What, what are the opportunities and challenges in your industry, and, and how do you think those can be addressed? By anything you can do in the future. Yes. Sorry, and for the technological side, what are you meaning by that? Well, there's, you know, we live in a, we, we've got this, this raw commodity that there's a lag in producing, and yep. we live in a, very, in a world where everything's changing quickly and rapidly, and, and, and broking sort of at the interface of that for the wool industry. How do you, what do you see as the challenges in, in, in coming at your industry, um, and, and the opportunities that that then presents, and how do you think you can address those? over the next ten, number of years? Yes, over the next few years, as technology progresses, I think it's probably a very good opportunity to introduce change. Uh, change is one thing that is difficult to make and some people will take that on initially and some will struggle a little bit. I think with other support, you're able to, uh, to, uh, you're able to further the technological moves and changes, like so using the iPad for typing. Uh, some of our reps, you know, they're older, older gentlemen, and weren't as, you know, weren't as forthcoming <laughs> with, um, with embracing the technology. But through creating the manual um, and being able to, able to have them with that detail in front of them to follow, um, it's been fantastic. I've seen some great results, and the the fellows are great. They'll get out there, have a go, and it's very good. So using that technology going forward. Um, I believe that it's a great opportunity. Uh, it's eliminating the amount of, of work that is, you, that is needed or necessary. Uh, less double handling. <coughs> Looking forward, I think that technology is probably the way forward to go through to produce you know, the quality and quantity of wool. I think the, just going on what this year has been and the season's been how tough it is. Um, the quantity of wool that's available overseas, whether like Brett was saying earlier, whether overseas markets have recognised that now or whether it gets later down the pipeline time-wise, whether then it's noticed and you know, there's a big buy-up, it's a little unforeseen, but I believe that there's that opportunity there. Um, I hope that the market re remains consistent and is at a, a buoyant level. And um, yeah, that we see that on-flow effect that overseas is still the demand and we're able to supply it. Thanks very much. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin.